morning, everyone, from me. John has given us a great picture of the, the God's story, God's big story. I'm zoning in on one particular day. Might have just been a short part of that day. I'm sure the celebrations went on for many a day. But this was a good day for Bartimaeus. This was the day he moved from darkness to light in more ways than one. Bartimaeus started the day blind and begging and finished it following Jesus. Begging, of course, was the only way in which Bartimaeus would get to eat. Such a man in those times were generally left to their own devices. It all started when he was sitting by the roadside on the right day, at the right time, when Jesus passed by. And when Bartimaeus called out, despite all the other noise and confusion, Jesus heard him. This was a good day. When Bartimaeus asked, what Bartimaeus asked for was mercy. One wonders how often Bartimaeus had been denied mercy. Here, in verse 47, we read, Jesus, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus must have heard good things about Jesus, perhaps about Jesus healing people along his way. Bartimaeus had heard enough that when he knew this was Jesus passing by, he called out. Not only this, he was not dissuaded from doing so by all these contrary negative voices. As we see, the faith of Bartimaeus did not diminish because of any fear of the crowd. He did not let discouragement get the better of him. He was intensely aware of his need for God's mercy to fall upon him. He cried out even louder and eventually went forward. Here is a beautiful picture of someone throwing themselves humbly on the mercy of God with a complete trust for the outcome. But we have read in verse 48, many sternly ordered him to be quiet. What was their problem? You would think that there would be some sort of an understanding of this man's plight. What was their problem? Maybe he was only an insignificant blind beggar, a potential nuisance. They would give him the cold shoulder. He should be kept quiet. In these times, they may have thought that sin lurked somewhere behind his blindness. He was interrupting important conversations, after all, with important, respectable people. Maybe they just wanted Jesus for themselves. Pretty callous, if that was their mindset. Or perhaps there was a bigger agenda, just wanting to keep Jesus in check or under some sort of control. For status reversal can be uncomfortable for some. Maybe blind Bartimaeus just provided a level of embarrassment that they weren't able to easily cope with. There have been many times in history where people try to keep the poor in their place. Long queues at Centrelink, moving the homeless off the streets, putting people in detention. If we look at the context and who was around, 
we could conclude that some of these contrary voices could actually have been Jesus' disciples. After all, just recently, they had tried to stop the children coming to Jesus. And if that was the case, we would shake our heads. But perhaps the point is for us to hear the reminder about what Jesus thinks is important. Previously, Jesus had told his disciples, don't hinder the children coming to me. Let the little children come to me. Welcome them. Now, Jesus would teach them about letting a poor blind man get to him. Jesus wants the broken and vulnerable to be able to find him. Jesus had already said those famous words which spoke of reversals. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. This man may be blind, but the kingdom of God was at hand. The disciples and whoever else eventually changed their tune. They realised they were on the wrong side of history. Jesus made sure they realised their responsibility as we read verse 49. Jesus stood still, himself, and said, call him here. You call him here. You bring him to me. This was Jesus promoting a serving ministry to others. Those just seconds or minutes before they weren't a person that they weren't concerned about. Call him here. One could only imagine what might have happened to blind Bartimaeus if he had been ignored that day. Perhaps we encounter many broken people who have had their path to Jesus blocked in the past. Happily, the disciples now said to Bartimaeus, take heart, get up, he is calling you. Relatedly, Here are the words of reassurance and encouragement that are needed, that open up the path to experience Jesus' love. Jesus loves you. This was a good day. One might imagine Bartimaeus grappling around with some excitement, tripping here and there, trying to get to Jesus. Maybe some people helped him over to Jesus. But Bartimaeus did get his chance to express faith in Jesus. He didn't hesitate. He didn't consider what other thing might need to have been done first, like he just got married, or he just bought a cow, or he had to bury his father. Those things that were quoted in another incident by Je- or in a, a story that Jesus told. He didn't hesitate. The mention that that Bartimaeus threw off his cloak is significant. Bartimaeus was tossing aside his security and his independence. His cloak was not only about warmth, but would also have been what he put on the ground in front of him as he begged for money. Money without which he would suffer and die. Bartimaeus was abandoning his security entirely. And this was totally different to the rich man that we recently looked at, who couldn't give up anything. Bartimaeus was now saying that he would be totally dependent on Jesus instead. He was throwing away his cloak, for his life was changing completely. And Jesus was quick to interpret this as faith worthy of salvation. Bartimaeus would need that cloak 
anymore. This was a good day for Bartimaeus. Jesus granted Bartimaeus his sight, not only as an act of compassion and healing, not only to restore him to his community, but also to acknowledge someone moving out of darkness and being lost into the light with new hope and purpose. The greatest gift for Bartimaeus was being made well, which means being saved, experiencing salvation. This was all as a result of faith, not by making oneself better, not by pretending to be good, not by following rules or rituals, but simply by faith. But not faith in anything. Not faith in himself. Bartimaeus was made well, that is saved, through faith in Jesus. For it would be Jesus who would soon, in about a week's time, go the whole way in sacrificing himself for Bartimaeus' sins. So Bartimaeus now went off to do his own thing. No. No. Bartimaeus began following Jesus. Life had changed completely on this very good day. Following Jesus is the natural and proper response to gaining salvation. This would mean going where Jesus went and doing what Jesus did. This would mean adopting the attitudes and priorities Jesus had. This would mean speaking words and loving others like Jesus. This would mean being part of the community of the kingdom of God. This would not mean going to the cross himself, as Jesus did literally, and for him, and for us. But it would mean entering into that sort of sacrificial service that Jesus describes as taking up our cross and following him. This was a good day for Bartimaeus. This would be a good day for anybody. This could be a good day for any of us. For here we are given a picture of what Jesus can do for us. He is as close and and as accessible as ever. When Jesus hears our voice and knows our faith, he responds with words to the effect, what do you want me to do for you? And Jesus will draw us from darkness to light, from brokenness to healing, from slavery to sin into freedom, from despair into hope. This is an invitation to make today an even better day. However, we may have to block out the alternative voices that make way too much noise. Contrary voices from all sides. The ones who would decry commitment to Jesus. The ones who would say that we're okay and we don't need mercy. The ones who would devalue Christian community. The ones who would say we aren't good enough or don't count. The ones that don't want us to come in and be part of something special the ones that don't want us to change. Even our own voice that may say that we don't know enough and shouldn't take any further step. Does any of that, do any of those alternative voices count? Do any of those voices matter? 
as against Jesus' voice. As against hearing Jesus say these wondrous words, your faith has made you well. We might just have to throw off our cloak Spring up, okay, don't have to, and come to Jesus. Here is an invitation to do just that, to throw off your cloak, to spring up and come to Jesus. I went back to uh, one of my older commentaries um, in preparation this week and I'm sure glad I did because sometimes I think, no, I've done enough, I've got this okay and then I thought, no, I will go back and read William Barclay who does a similar sort of approach to the scriptures just walking your way through the text as it's given and I found a pearl. I hope you like it. Christianity begins with a personal reaction to Jesus, a reaction of love, an instinctive feeling that here is the one person who can meet our need. When Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Having been sternly ordered to be quiet, he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus enlisted the people of good faith and goodwill and said to them, call him here. And by this time, all that they were thinking before was swept away and they suddenly realised, oh, take heart, get up. He is calling you. Jesus had a conversation with Bartimaeus in terms of what he needed. But in expressing his answer about seeing again, he expressed a faith that was so obvious, so tangible, so real, that Jesus said to him, oh yes, you'll see again, but your faith has made you well. Christianity begins with a personal reaction to Jesus, a reaction of love, an instinctive feeling that here is the one person who can meet our need. What a good day it is. Amen.